Good morning, and welcome to the June 2017 meeting of the ACIP. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, we look forward to a really um, interesting and we hope not too lengthy meeting. Uh, let me turn it over to Dr. Khan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the June 2017 ACIP meeting. Um, I will now start off the exciting um, presentations with some administrative announcements. Next slide. The proceedings of this meeting are accessible to people not in attendance via the World Wide Web. Welcome to those who cannot attend the ACIP meeting in person. Several people will be with us for the duration of this meeting to assist with meeting functions. Stephanie Thomas, Natalie Green, and somebody is usually in the back of the room, and Stephanie Thomas is over here, as well as Chris Carraway, who helps with the computer. We have a full agenda today until we adjourn at approximately 5.30, and um, we will adjourn at around 12 o'clock tomorrow. Handouts of slides to be presented have been distributed to the ACIP members and are available for members of the public on the table outside this auditorium. And for ACIP members and liaison members who have access to SharePoint, you can also see the slides in PDF format on SharePoint today. Next slide. Slides presented at this meeting will be posted on the ACIP website approximately three to four weeks after the meeting, after figures of the slide are sufficiently described in order to make them accessible by all viewers, including the visually disabled. The live webcast videos will be posted approximately four weeks, and meeting minutes are posted to the ACIP website generally 90 to 120 days after the meeting. The minutes from the 2017 February meeting will be available soon on the ACIP website. Members of the media who are interested in conducting interviews with ACIP members should contact Ian Branham for assistance in arranging interviews sitting along the wall to my left. The next ACIP meeting will be at CDC on Wednesday and Thursday, October 25th to 26th. Registration for all meeting attendees is required and will be open this Friday on the ACIP website. The registration deadline for non-U.S. citizens is September 25th, 2017, and the registration deadline for U.S. citizens is October 5th, 2017. As a reminder for non-U.S. citizens attending ACIP meetings, completion of several forms is required for each meeting at the time of registration. It is important that these forms are submitted within the required time frame, and Stephanie Thomas, the ACIP committee meeting management specialist, will be able to help with any concerns about this process. I'm going to pass it back to Dr. Bennett. Thank you. Um, we would like to welcome uh, three visitors from Japan. And if you would be willing to stand as I call your name, I'd appreciate it. Um, Dr. Wakaba uh, Fukushima, who is professor and chairperson of the Department of Public Health, Osaka City University Faculty of Medicine in Osaka, Japan. Uh, Dr. Megumi. Uh, Matsu Naga, Associate Professor in the Department of Preventive Medicine, Faculty of Medicine at Saga University in Saga, Japan, and Dr. Kazu, I'm sorry, Kazuya Ito, Research Associate, Department of Public Health, Osaka City University Graduate School of Medicine in Osaka, Japan. Thank you and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that uh, we'll get a chance to touch base with you. Um, we also have a few new liaison and ex officio representatives to welcome to the committee. Dr. Carolyn Quash Thon is the new chair of the Canadian National Advisory Committee on Immunization and will be the liaison representative. Dr. Quash Thon is Associate Professor of Pediatrics at McGill University. There she is. <laughs> welcome. <clears throat> And Dr. Linda Lambert will be our new NIH representative. Dr. Lambert is Chief of the Respiratory Diseases Branch, Division of Microbiology and Infectious Diseases at NIAID. Welcome. We have some member substitutions for this meeting. Um, among our liaison representatives, Dr. Corey Robertson is representing the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America. <clears throat> Dr. Alexandra Woodward, is representing Biotechnology Innovation Organization, BIO. Carol Hayes will also be representing the um, American Nurses Association. And Dr. Pamela Rockwell will be representing the American Academy of Family Physicians. And not included on this slide, uh, Dr. Susan Lett will be representing the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists. 
We also have um, two ex officio members uh, substitutions today. Dr. Angela Shen is representing the National Vaccine Program Office, and Colonel Margaret Yavacone is representing the Department of Defense. Topics presented at ACIP meetings include open discussion with time reserved for public comment. Public comment period is scheduled immediately preceding each ACIP vote and at the end of the day. We ask that public comments prior to a vote be related specifically to the vote being taken for that vaccine and comments not related to a vote be held until the public comment period at the end of the day. People who plan to make public comments should visit the registration table at the rear of the auditorium and complete the public comment form and leave it on the table. We will collect these and log you in for public comment. Ms. Stephanie Thomas will record your name and provide information on the process. People who make public comments should provide three pieces of information prior to your comment. Your name, your organization if applicable, and any conflicts of interest. Registration for public comment um, was also solicited in advance of this meeting through the Federal Registry. Given time constraints, each individual is asked to limit their total comment to under three minutes. Comments not presented at this meeting may be submitted in writing for inclusion in the meeting minutes. To summarize the conflict of interest provisions applicable to ACIP, as noted in the ACIP Policies and Procedures Manual, members of the ACIP agree to forego participation in certain activities related to vaccines during their tenure on the committee. For certain other interests that potentially enhance a member's expertise while serving on the committee, CDC has issued limited conflict of interest waivers. Members who conduct clinical vaccine trials or serve on data safety monitoring boards may present to the committee on matters related to those vaccines, but these members are prohibited from participating in committee votes on issues related to those vaccines. Regarding other vaccines of the concerned company, a member may participate in discussions with the provision that he or she abstains on all votes related to the vaccines of that company. It is important to know that at the beginning of each meeting, ACIP members state any conflicts of interest. At every meeting, we provide an update on the status of ACIP recommendations. There have been two publications published since the February ACIP meeting, both published in May 2017. The first is updated recommendations for use of MenB FHBP serogroup B meningococcal vaccine, and the second are the recommendations of the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices for use of cholera vaccine. Recommendations and immunization schedules can be downloaded from the ACIP website. Next slide. This slide on the screen shows the ACIP website where detailed instructions for submissions of names and potential candidates to serve as ACIP members may be found. Applications for ACIP membership are due no later than August 1st, 2017, for the four-year term beginning July 2018, and we encourage anybody who is considering applying to reach out to either Stephanie Thomas or myself um, if you have any questions. And I'll return it to Dr. Bennett. Thank you. So today, um, we want to thank two very special members of our committee um, who have finished their four-year terms on the ACIP, but who have also agreed to continue until we have new members uh, named to the committee. Um, so first, I'd like to thank Dr. Allie Kemp. Um, Dr. Kemp uh, was our fearless leader of the HPV work group, taking us through a time of great progress and several truly challenging decisions. She focused our attention on our new responsibilities as a result of the ACA and pushed us to clarify the impact of our recommendations on health equity, a critical consideration. She brought her specific expertise on the realities of implementation of vaccine policy, also critical to our decisions. Finally, she survived the wonderful Atlanta snowstorm. I don't know if you saw a snowflake, but I didn't see a snowflake. However, at home, she got six feet of snow that day. So <laughs> despite all of this, Allie has begged for lifetime tenure on the ACIP, and we would all love to have her with us indefinitely. Thank you so much, Allie, for your service. Dr. Art Rheingold is also completing his term. Dr. Rheingold brought tremendous expertise to the ACIP from his long tenure with the Emerging Infections Program and as a veteran of SAGE. We will miss him tremendously, especially his insightful but disarmingly simple questions that seem to summarize the content of any given session. 
Art is also entering the Guinness Book of World Records for having chaired and served on the largest number of ACIP work groups. Although he is rarely in the United States, he does have a room set aside for him in this building. <laughs> We know that he, will al he was always looking for a place to sleep as he has so few friends in Atlanta. <laughs> I know that we will miss him tremendously, um, but the waiters at the General Muir are truly heartbroken. <laughs> Thank you very much, Art, for your service. So I'm personally just hoping that, that Allie and Art will just stay with us indefinitely. That would be great. <laughs> um, okay, we are going to now go on to taking the role. Um, I'd ask each of the uh, committee members to go around and state their conflicts of interest. And why don't we start with Jose, Dr. Romero. <clears throat> Jose Romero, no conflict of interest with uh, topics on today's uh, agenda. Art Rheingold, no conflicts. Allie Kemp, no conflicts. Paul Hunter, no conflicts. Ezan Olu, no conflict. Pellegrini, no conflicts. Robert Atmar, Takeda Vaccines. Grace Lee, no conflicts. Ed Belanja, no conflicts. Kelly Moore, no conflicts. Peter Salaji, no conflicts. <clears throat> Chip Walter, no conflicts. Laura Riley, no conflicts. And David Stevens, no conflicts. Nana Bennett, no conflicts. And now I'd like the ex officio members to introduce themselves, starting with Dr. Messonnier. Morning, everybody. Nancy Messonnier, NCIRD. And we go to Angela Shen, National Vaccine Program Office. Linda Lambert, National Institutes of Health. Noray Nair, HRSA. Wellington Sun FDA. Margaret Iacovoni, Department of Defense. Mary Beth Hance, CMS. Amy Groom, Indian Health Service. David Weber, Shea. Uh, Amy Middleman, Sam. Sean O'Leary, Pediatric Infectious Diseases Society. Pat Whitley Williams, National Medical Association. Corey Robertson, Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America. Bill Schaffner, National Foundation for Infectious Diseases. Susan Lett, CSTE. Alex Woodward, Bio. Stan Grog, American Osteopathic Association. Steve Foster, American Pharmacist Association. Christine Finley, Association of Immunization Managers. Mark Natoski, AHIP. Ken Schmader, American Geriatric Society. Sandra Freihofer, American College of Physicians. Sandra Freihofer, American Medical Association. Kevin Alt, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. Carol Hayes, the American College of Nurse Midwives and substituting for the American Nurses Association. Susan Even, American College Health Association. Marie Michelle Leger, American Academy of Physician Assistants. David Kimberlin, American Academy of Pediatrics Red Book. Carrie Byington, American Academy of Pediatrics Committee on Infectious Diseases. Pamela Rockwell, AAFP. Thank you very much to everyone.